Beautiful mallet, carving mallet, hold fast mallet, joiner's mallet, finishing mallet. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. So why do I need a finishing mallet when I already have a joiner's mallet? And they're basically the exact same thing, but what are some of the differences? Well, a joiner's mallet has a hard face. This is for when you really want to whack things. You want to pound them together. You want to move items. You want to chisel. Uh, this, is, this is for moving items very efficiently. But the problem is this is a very hard wood. This is a, a hard piece of oak. Um, and if I'm doing something a little softer, I'm going to be denting the wood. And I don't want to do that. Whereas this is a, a softer wood. The cherry is number one softer. And number two, the leather on the front is going to protect it. So if I'm tapping together joinery, but I still want to have the momentum of a joiner's mallet, I can use a finishing mallet. So I want to jump into uh, what I'm doing with this and what makes it a little bit different from a joiner's mallet. Let's look. With the joiner's mallet, I made it out of a piece of firewood, but in this case I wanted to use this hunk of cherry that was given to me a while ago. This is actually the same piece of wood that I made my leg vise out of, and it is a beautiful piece to work with. It's about two and a half inches thick, and I want to make a block that is about six inches long by about four inches tall. And uh, I'm just going to use a handsaw and hack it out of this board. Pretty uh, straightforward. And then smooth everything down and square it all up and make sure that it's true and all my edges I can measure off of. I have a whole video on squaring up lumber, so I won't go into detail on that. But basically just flattening one side and then taking a square and making sure that the edges are actually square to that one side. Next up, I need to make a handle. This is a piece of white oak that is about three quarter inches thick by about an inch and a half by about uh, 15 inches long. And I want to put an angle in it. So I made a mark at one end about three inch eighths of an inch away from the side and drew a line between that and the next corner. And uh, then I can just use a plane and plane it down to that angle. Next up, I can put the block of wood back onto the handle and mark out where the handle will intersect with the block. This way I have exact markings on what those angles are into this particular block of wood. Next up I can transfer those lines around the block and this lets me know exactly where it will be entering and exiting the top of the block. I can use a brace and bit to bore out the vast majority of the material and this makes the next step very quick and easy of just coming in with a chisel and mallet and cleaning it out and paring down the edges. I went into great detail on this in the last one with the joiner's mallet, so I'm not going to hit it that much, other than to say I love this Stanley Everlasting chisel. It is a fantastic thing to beat on, and uh, they are a joy if you ever get a hand, if you ever get around to using one. Next up, I can just come through and slowly clean out and pair out everything, make sure that all the junk is out of the corners, and then test it with a handle, and then pair it out again, and then test it with a handle, and then pair it out again, and keep going until I can pound it all the way down so there's only about three quarter inches sticking out the top. And it's a lot of going back and forth and back and forth until it has a nice fit. Then I'm going to cut off both of the ends at a slight angle. I'll just make a mark at about three-eighths of an inch at the bottom and draw a line up to the top corner and then just cut it off at the bench. I'm just following that line all the way around and making a nice clean cut. Then I can come in and actually start shaping this. I use a low angle jack to shape off all the end grain and then uh, use a Stanley number four to shape the top of the block. I like to give it just a little bit of rounded shape so it feels good. Then a spoke shave and I can shape the handle and give everything a good chamfer and make it feel good in the hand and look good. The next thing I want to do is actually glue on the leather pads onto the front and back. I'm just using a DAP concrete a contact adhesive. It's a fairly straightforward glue. There are better ones, but if this falls off then I will just replace it. And I'll probably be replacing the pads sometime in the future as they get banged up. Now those wedges that I just cut off a little bit ago, I want to hold on to those and I use them here so that I can get a good clamping pressure on this. Then I'll leave it overnight in the clamp. But while it's in place, let's actually do some carving. So before I actually put it in the clamp, um, I glued on the patterns that I want to use for the carving on this. Because it's a finishing mallet, I really want it to look nice and sharp. 
and just be, well, finished. <laughs> uh, so I uh, use a glue stick to glue this down. And then all of the carving on this is just done with this V tool. It's a very straightforward, easy tool, easy to learn and easy to get into carving, especially with the letter working here. It's a very, very quick work, very, very simple. On all of the uh, Celtic knotting around the outside, I'm just following on both sides of the black line and uh, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, most people could pick this up in 10 to 15 minutes of using it. It really doesn't take a whole lot of effort and energy to, uh, to get this right. Uh, doing one face of the mallet usually takes around 20 to 25 minutes, so less than an hour to do all of the carving on both sides of this mallet. And I'm really happy with how this came out. It makes a, a good finished mallet. After it has all been carved, I can remove the pattern with a card scraper. Really quick way of getting rid of it and uh, also starting the finished process of smoothing off the surface. And uh, I, this, is, this is just one of those fun times when you get to peel it back and see the carving underneath and it's just like, oh yeah, I'm happy. One of the reasons why I love carving. <laughs> Next up, I can clean off the leather, and I just want to kind of cut it at a 45 degree angle on all the faces. Just give it a bit of a nice edge, and a carving knife makes fairly quick work of that. As with all my hand tools, they are finished with a boiled linseed oil and paste wax. And no, I don't have any problem with getting the boiled linseed oil on the face of the hammer. But if you want to see my finishing process, I have a full video on that as well. And uh, oh yeah, I am very pleased with how this came out. Just love what carving can do to a hand tool, and uh, this is no exception. A fantastic finishing mallet I will enjoy for years to come. So there's a quick look at the finishing mallet. This is one I've been wanting to make for a while, and uh, I'm really in love with it. It came out great, and I'm looking forward to using this, especially with all the dovetails I have coming up. So if you want to see the video on making the joiner's mallet, it's basically the exact same. I go into a lot more detail on the joiner's mallet than I do on the finishing mallet. This is kind of a, a quicker, simpler project, as I've done a lot of this information before. But uh, yeah, I'm loving it, and I'm looking forward to using it. And I hope you did too. If you did like the video, please hit like and go ahead and smash that subscribe button. I want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason this channel is still running today. If you'd like to help out with that, you can find out more at the link right over here. Also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.